Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back, after quite some time, to FTL. It's been quite some time since we've been playing this game, and there's a good reason for that. I decided a while ago that I didn't really want to play FTL anymore until Advanced Edition came out, because I had been playing it quite a lot, and I decided that I basically had had enough for the time being and needed a bit of a break from it. But, as it happens, Advanced Edition is taking a lot longer than I expected, so I figured why not come back and do another little bonus run here, probably not going to do too much more FTL until Advanced Edition does come out, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a bit of a run in honor of the upcoming Advanced Edition, in honor specifically of one of the changes that's being added to all the Type C ships. Apparently all the Type C ships are starting with a system called the Cloning Bay instead of the Med Bay, which means that whenever your crew die, they respawn in the Cloning Bay instead, and they have a little bit of a hit to all of their skills, but are otherwise unharmed. Now, we can't exactly do that here in normal FTL, but what we can do is scorn the Med Bay entirely. We're going to try a challenge run today, and it is probably going to be a complete disaster, but we're going to give it our best shot and see what happens. We're doing the specific challenge run here of never using the Med Bay. We're going to be picking a ship that does have a Med Bay, but we're going to leave it offline, and we're never going to turn it back on again. If it gets broken, it's never getting repaired, and we're going to try and complete the entire run without ever using the thing. It's probably going to lead to utter disaster, but we'll see how it goes, and I'm sure it'll be an interesting challenge either way. Anyhow, let's get a move on here. So, what are we doing? We're starting a new game, of course. We have only my visual mods on. There's nothing else changing the difficulty of the game in any way. And I think for once, we're going to go back and use the Rock Cruiser Type A. This is not a ship that I'm particularly fond of as a general rule, but I think it's well picked, uh, well, a good selection for this particular challenge. The reason for that is, quite simply, that it has a couple features that we like. One of them being Rockmen crew. Since they have extra health, they're less likely to die early in the run. We have a better chance of getting more crew to replace them when they inevitably do die. It also has a lot of doors and easy airlock access to basically every room in the ship. Pretty much every room is just two rooms away from an airlock. Even these inner rooms are just one, two, three, done. They're all two rooms away from the airlock, which means that if we need to vent a room to get rid of borders, that's a pretty good choice. It does have a couple other concerns. For example, very slow moving crew might mean it's very difficult to get away from things like borders, but we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Our med bay is also conveniently out of the way, so it's not like it's going to interrupt things by having it in the way, not that I can imagine it would. But uh, yeah, I can imagine this run is going to cause us all kinds of trouble, but we're going to give it a shot and see what catastrophes we can involve with it. Now, um, there are a couple other ships that I think would probably be pretty good for this challenge, one of which would be either of the slug ships, because they both start with level 2 doors, and level 2 doors would be a nice little benefit, I think. Uh, they have a couple problems though with not having super powerful weapons, and if you end up taking a lot of damage in the early game, you don't have any way of really healing anymore. The the Type B, since it starts with no bed, med bay, might be a good choice, but I consider using the healing bombs to be cheating in this challenge. There is no healing allowed of any kind in this challenge. And if you don't have the healing bomb to do starting boarding with, then you kind of have no firepower, because all you have of Artemis missiles. So that one is a bit of a problem in that respect. And the Zoltan Cruiser also has uh, level 2 doors, but the problem here is you have Zoltan crew who only have 70 health, which means they're much more likely to die early on. So we're going to go and try it with the Rock Cruiser Type A. I'm going to rename this sucker the VSS Panacea, which is, of course, like the cure for all injuries. And we need to rename our crew as well. No Chris Mallet, you are going to be called... You can be called Immunity. We'll rename Jack here. He can be called... Munt Vaccine. And Norwin Schultz, you can be renamed to be Antibody. Now, we got the cure for what ails you. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be a disaster, but we're going to give it a shot here. Challenge run on board the Rock Cruiser Type A, the VSS Panacea, on normal difficulty. Can we beat the game with this? I don't even know. We'll see, though. Either way, here goes nothing. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We'll need supplies for the journey, so we'll have to make sure we explore every sector before we move on to the next, but we'll have to get to the exit before the Rebels can catch us. Surprise, surprise. Alright, so let's get our crew moved around here. Let's get some people set up. We're going to want as much evasion as we can get our hands on. And there we go, Medbay is now permanently turned off. Okay, we got evasion, we got some firepower to hopefully kill people before they have too many rockets hitting us in the face, and... 
hopefully everything will go according to plan here. We'll have to get jumping though and see what happens. We're of course looking for weapons early on if we can find them, anything to replace these missiles, because relying only on missiles is generally a way to get yourself horribly murdered. This looks like an interesting target though. He's got no shields, but he does also have very limited health. We should be able to kill him in two rockets, which is pretty good. Let's intervene and defend the refueling outpost he's attacking. Here we go, taking the higher threat. The automated ship moves in to engage us. Hopefully he does not accomplish that task, but we're gonna give it our best shot. Artemis missile and the weapons, of course. We wanna try and make it uh, less able to attack us back. Any bombs that hit rooms we're in will be permanent damage, so we can try and avoid those if at all possible. Come on, Artemis Missile, do not miss, please. There's two lasers coming in, hopefully none of those hit us. There we go, we knocked out the bomb before it was able to fire, which is perfect. It reset the timing on it, which means we should be able to kill them before they can hit us. Perfect, Auto Scout goes down, very nice. All right, we ship breaks apart and we quickly salvage what we can, getting two missiles, perfect. A drone part and ten scrap. Getting missiles to replace the missiles we use is very important in this stage of the challenge, because until we have non-missile based weapons, running out of missiles is the easiest thing that's gonna kill us. The outpost hails us after the scout is destroyed, thanking us for the help and giving us an additional fuel, two missiles and 16 scrap. Very nice. There's a store over there, but there's a distress beacon over here, and that's kind of a higher priority right now. Now with our money, we might immediately want to put money into our, our doors. Because getting level 2 doors, I think, is a pretty big deterrent to borders, whereas right now we basically will just die if we get attacked by Mantis borders. Um, if we have level 2 doors, we can try and suffocate them a little bit more, and that might protect us. So I think doors are definitely a high priority thing this game, but we, as always, we need some shields and engines before we can afford to do too much else. So let's jump over to this distress beacon and see what they have for us, and hopefully we won't get stomped before we have a chance to turn things in our favor. We locate the source of the distress call, where a nearby human mining colony has been attacked by an unknown disease spread amongst its workers. They're trying to set up a quarantine to mitigate the spread, but lack any enforcement, and a riot seems likely. Thankfully, we can send our rock crew down to prevent the riot, so let's do that. It's unlikely the rock's impressive immune system is susceptible to a human virus, so we send them in. He's able to intimidate the workers long enough for the colony forces to set up a quarantine. Their leader offers us a reward and assures us they will try and find a cure as soon as possible. Sure they will. Either way, they give us four fuel, two missiles, and a paltry seven scrap. Oh well. Can't win them all, I guess. There's another distress beacon over there. We might want to go there, but I do want to kind of get to that store if we can. And when we go here, the rebels are going to start advancing, so we might not be able to get to that store. Either way, we should have enough rockets to last us for at least the next sector or two. So let's check out the distress beacon and see if we can get any more free loot. They say... Hello. We used our last FTL fuel to jump to this station. They indicate a burnt-out husk of debris and warped metal. As you can see, since the war must have spread to this sector, we've been stranded here. Well, sure, we'll give you two fuel and hopefully you give some something nice. We give them two fuel and they give us... Ooh, a laser! Thank goodness! Thank the gods! We can finally get out of here. We're jumping straight home, so take this extra weapon. We won't need it, hopefully. And a heavy laser Mark One. Okay, that's actually really nice. On its own, this is useless because it doesn't actually get through shields, but we can use it to hopefully avoid using additional rockets if we can get through their defenses first with something like the Artemis. So that's a really nice little boon we've just acquired. Also, it takes us a little bit more scrap to be able to buy upgraded shields, but that shouldn't take too long. Let's jump over to this sector and see if we can continue the good luck at the start of this run. We arrive at the next beacon only to be immediately hailed by a small shuttle. Help us! We're being attacked by pirates! Well, of course, friends. Let's get in there and help that civilian ship. We power up weapons and engage the pirates. Alright, they have a laser mini beam combo, so that's pretty nasty. Uh, they have a good amount of hull health, too. Well, I guess what we're gonna do then is we're gonna try and knock them down as quickly as we can. If we Artemis them in the weapons, I'd love to be able to use the heavy laser instead, but the priority here, I think, is actually taking out their offensive power. Actually, you know what? Turn off that, turn this on. If we Artemis them in the shields, if you laser them in the weapons, it should get them before they can fire again. So if they get one shot in on us, unless they get really unlucky and miss with this laser shot, because they only have a basic laser, so it's only going to hit us one time if it gets even that much in. And then we can heavy laser the weapons, which should break both of them. Go, Artemis Missile. Please miss. Oh, they got us. Alright, we're taking two damage. Thankfully, it's in unused rooms, so our crew aren't injured, and we missed them with the heavy laser. That is bad luck. Fire again. Thankfully, their, weapons, their shields stay down for a bit longer than that, so we should be okay, and they miss with that other shot, which is perfect, and we've broken the weapons. Ideal. We might be able to use the heavy laser exclusively from here. We'll see what we can do. We're going to heavy laser them in the shields and see what happens. There we go. We're down to only four hull left. We should be able to keep using the heavy laser. This is actually really lucky. Really quite lucky indeed. Heavy laser the engines to make sure they can't run. There we go. We only have two hull left. They're going to die before they can do anything else about it. I doubt they can actually fix their systems fast enough to avoid that damage. And nobody's on the helm, so they're doomed. Goodbye, Rebel Fighter. Perfect. 
All right. Pirate ship breaks apart, and we gather a fuel, a drone part, and 18 scrap. When we contact the civilian ship... Ooh, wow. Wow! They respond, It's a good thing you came when you did. We'd be dead now otherwise. I'm a shipwright, and I'd like to help you like you helped me. And he gives us 10 scrap and a halberd beam. Okay. <laughs> this is... The game is giving us so many nice things to start off here. Wow. Well, we're going to immediately buy ourselves level 2 shields, because protecting ourselves from weapons fire, I think, is marginally more important in the very early game than defending against doors, because you don't get a lot of borders in the very early game. So this will give us the ability to protect ourselves a little bit more. We actually have enough power to run it, too, since we're not using the hull missiles right now. So that's really nice. Of course, once people start having more shields, we'll need to rely on a different weapon layout, but for now, this will do. So let's jump onwards and see what else we can do. Let's jump into the nebula here first, and then we'll head out from there. That'll give us a bit of extra time on the rebels. Just please don't be an ion storm. Nope, just a nebula. Perfect. An automated rebel... A, a, an advanced rebel automated ship remains station near a small rebel space station, but without functioning sensors, we can't tell what's inside. Well, of course we're going to go for the station. Let's attack them. They have missiles, though, which is dangerous for us. Thankfully, our heavy lasers should be able to hit them before that Lido fires. Actually, no. It's probably going to fire them at the same time, so it's not going to make any difference. Plus, that's on the most internal weapon slot. So the odds of that actually being blocked are basically zero. Hopefully... Oh, we missed them, too. Hopefully, though, their aim is bad. And they don't hit the important rooms. Good. And we missed them twice in a row. Fantastic. Please knock out that weapon system. We need to knock those missiles out before they start killing our crew, because that is definitely a major concern here. We've missed them three times in a row. All right. And they've hit us. Oh, no. Unimportant rooms still. Oxygen is important later, but not right now. There we go. Now we should be able to heavy laser at the Lido missile. It's going to fire one more time. There it goes. We've missed it again. This is outrageously bad luck. All right. Artemis them again. We need to break that weapon. And we've missed it again. No way. Okay. Thankfully, it's finally broken. That is ridiculously bad aiming luck, though. Ridiculously bad. Let's go move antibody to start repairing the oxygen, since they're not needed to actually help us anymore at this point. I'm not using the Artemis anymore. That's heavy laser. You know what I should have done? I should have just halberd beamed them. Forgot I actually had that and could run it. With the power we have, that would have one-shot killed them. That would have been much better, but oh well, you can't win them all. If we can eventually hit this guy again, holy cow, he has massively high evasion for this stage of the game. There we go. Oxygen is fixed. Let's go back and fix the doors. There we go. That was way more difficult than it needed to be. Thankfully, we didn't take much damage from them. Our crew are still at full health. We got 12 scrap from the broken ship. When we investigate the station, another halberd beam. What is this madness? The station is a storage site for military-grade weapons. We find one that can be easily attached to the ship. 10 scrap and another halberd beam. I mean, thank you, game? I'm very, very happy with your generosity, but craziness. All right. Let's get you over to the engines, and we will move onwards. Seriously, this is a very lucky start. Very lucky. Let's keep going, though, and see what else we can find out here. There's a store over there, but we're not going to be able to make it back there at any point. So let's just move this way. I think we're going to have to go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which might be really hard with not getting overrun by the rebels. So let's move out and see how far we can get. What's over here? We detect a rebel scout on an attack approach to a small refueling outpost. The weapons are charged, but they're not yet firing. They do have missiles, though. Let's intervene to defend the outpost and see if we can not die. The rebel responds to our threats, and they don't know who we are, but the no one defies the rebel fleet. They move in to engage us. They've got a little laser, which we're not afraid of, and a missile, which we are afraid of. So we're going to Artemis their shields again, then we're going to heavy laser their weapons. They're going to fire the missile before we can get our shot off, but even if they hit the weapons, it won't turn anything off because we have a spare power bar. Please don't hit anything important. Good, they didn't hit us at all. And we hit their shields, which means their weapons are now offline. Perfect. Okay, that was exactly what we were hoping for. Exactly what we were hoping for. Next heavy laser shot is going into the engines to prevent them from trying to run away. Except we miss. That's fine. We're going to be missing a lot in the early game with these single-shot lasers, because we don't really have the ability to really block anything. And I might have to Artemis again here. I don't want them to fire that missile at me. We're going to make sure we keep their systems disabled. There we go. One more shot will kill them. Let's try and hit them somewhere that'll prevent them from running away. I don't think there's anybody in the helm, though, so we should be guaranteed. There we go. Perfect shot. Rebel fighter goes down. No damage taken. Ship breaks apart, and we get a fuel, a missile, and 13 scrap. And the outpost hails us, saying that the pompous bastards expected free service just because they defeated the Federation. They offer us two more fuel and 14 more scrap for the help. Awesome. We're going to start using that money to power ourselves up, no doubt. But... Is there, let's jump see what we're looking at first. Okay, nothing interesting to jump to, so we have a good amount of money to sell if we sell one of these Albert Beams and probably one of these missiles, depending on what we actually acquire at the shop. But I think what we want right now is the ability to upgrade our evasion, because that would be a nice little benefit right now. And then getting doors might be good too. Let's do one power bar and one there. 
We can use the power from the oxygen to run this while we need it, and that way we'll have a little bit of better evasion and protection against borders if we start getting them soon. Now, not to say that that'll actually protect us for sure against borders, because if we have to go in to fight one to defend a system, we're gonna take damage, but at least this way we'll hopefully be able to protect ourselves a little more if they land in some of these outward buildings, or other central, central rooms. So let's jump again and keep making our way towards the exit. What do we see here? The Mantis, a Mantis ship with the markings of a warrior tribe breaks position and attacks. Alright, so they got missiles and two lasers. Lasers can't hurt us, missiles can hurt us. Turning off the oxygen to power the engines a little bit more, that 25% evasion should hopefully come in handy here. We're gonna need to take an Artemis to the shields again, then we can heavy laser the weapons. That will knock out the missile as well, which is nice. Let's see if they get lucky with their missile firing this time. So far we've been really lucky with the missiles not hitting rooms with crew, and we got lucky again. Unfortunately, our Artemis missed, which is not so good. We're gonna need to fire another one in there. Please knock out the shields this time. Please have them miss us with the rocket again. Nope. Oh! Oh boy. Hit us in the weapons. That's unfortunate. Please hit them. Good. Knock out their weapons now. Perfect. What? That's the last weapon slot? That's unfortunate. Thankfully, Vexine is immune to fire, so we took 15 damage there, but he's not dying. He just is injured. And we took a hit in the shields, but that's still fine. And unfortunately, our weapons are offline, so we need to Artemis their rocket to turn that thing off. We're gonna lose more of our weapon system in a second. Yeah, it's gonna burn out. Alright, let's get our other crew in there to help fix this, because otherwise we are in trouble. We need that fire to go out, we need to repair that system pronto, otherwise we can't do anything to these guys. Thankfully their shields are broken, I think they're fixing their weapons for some reason. So we'll be able to use the heavy laser quickly to hopefully knock them back offline and prevent them from attacking us. But we're gonna wait and see if they fix the weapon room first, because if they do, then we're gonna need to be able to turn that off in a hurry. No, it looks like we're gonna be able to kill them with the heavy laser before anything else happens. Go heavy laser! Okay, and we're suffocating. Get out of that room immediately. Turn the oxygen on. Get out of there. We do not want to take any suffocation damage because any damage we take is permanent. Alright, so Antibody took a bit of damage there, but he's still alive. Got two fuel, two missiles, and 15 scrap for defeating the pirates, but we've started to take our first damage of the adventure. We're going to keep taking more damage, and eventually our crew's going to start dying. So we need to be able to replace them to be able to keep going here at all. Let's go fix the shield system and see what else we can do. I have no idea if this challenge run is even feasibly possible because of how much damage you're undoubtedly going to take throughout the course of a run, just from little things like that suffocation damage. But, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Alright, antibody back to the engines, and vaccine back over to the weapons. Okay, so... That was partially my own fault because of the fact that I had taken power out of the oxygen. We're going to run them back in there and see what we can do now to keep it getting... Keep moving forwards here, rather. Oh, we can actually jump straight across there. That's probably the best choice. But I think we have a good number of jumps left, so we're going to go the long way around. That should give us a couple extra jumps. Will it? If we go... It'll be one... Two... Three... Four... Yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if it's going to be much different. But we're going to try it anyway. We're going to go this way. Here we go! What do we find over here? A Federation encrypted signal is being broadcast from a nearby planet. Well, let's send an away party to investigate! It couldn't kill our crew at all, could it? We find a hidden Federation outpost. They message us, saying, Quick! We just got word from a sister outpost that they've been discovered by the rebels and are under, under attack! If you're still loyal to the Federation, go save them! Giving us three fuel, drone part, and seven scrap. Sure, okay. That's better than getting murdered, and the quest beacon is right beside us, so I guess that's where we're going. Oh goody. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. We arrive in the sector to see a small outpost being bombarded by an automated drone. This must be the Federation base we were told about. Alright, now these guys have two lasers, which is pretty dangerous. Artemis Heavy Laser is probably still our best bet. This guy has eight health, so we can't just kill him with a single shot from the Hull Laser Artemis combo. Um, the other alternative here... No, that's good, I think, still, because the heavy laser will break both of those dual lasers if it hits them. We, we risk taking a whole bunch of damage in their first salvo, though, and especially more if we miss. Come on now, then. Just don't miss. Here comes the first salvo. Oh, thank goodness. Look at all those misses that came our way. That's awesome. All right, heavy laser them in the weapons. There we go. Their weapons are broken, and they are breached, which means they can never replace them. We can heavy laser them to death at our leisure now. Perfect. Let's try and break that helm. There we go. Now we can't miss. And we'll go for the engines just to break everything. That could have been much worse if we didn't get lucky on that first salvo there. Awesome. Alright, the auto assault is down. Perfect. We scrapped the wreckage, getting two fuel, a missile, and eight scrap, and... Ooh, wow, a glaive beam! This is madness! With the threat gone, we contact the Federation outpost. They respond, saying, 
Our location has been compromised. Take everything you can, and please drop our survivors off at the next station. One soldier offers to stay and fight, giving us seven scrap and a glaive beam, as well as Kriz's. Our first Mantis. Excellent. Mantises are probably going to be one of our most expendable units, because we'll wind up sending them in to fight borders a lot, because it'll burn out their health, but it'll kill the borders more quickly than anything else will. Unless we can get them killed by the doors, of course. Uh, if they're in rooms we need to protect, we'll send our Mantises in. So we'll probably cycle through a lot of different Manti. <laughs> but we have a Mantis, which just says power our shields. That is good stuff. That is actually really lucky. Okay. Now, is there anything else I want to buy power for in the ship? I want to spend more money on our engines again, but we don't really have the money to power that without turning off the oxygen. I guess it's worthwhile, though. It means we can dodge more rockets. So we'll buy one of those and keep looking. Now, they're going to advance up to here. We could probably get... One, two, three, four more jumps instead of just three jumps if we go over here instead. So let's do this now. What do we find here? We've jumped into a sector filled with civilian activity. We scan the various advertisement channels whilst waiting for our FTL drive to charge and are intrigued by a grey market shipwright who offers eight fuel for three missiles. We do need missiles on this ship, but that's a really good do deal, so I'll take it. Let's jump over here and then work our way over to the exit beacon. We found ourselves some asteroids. We arrive at an asteroid belt to discover that a rebel automated ship has been stationed here and we have to get ready to fight them. Alright, this could be really bad. This could be really, really very bad. With asteroid damage, they could really wreck us. Thankfully the ion mist, which is one of the things I was most worried about there. We're gonna Artemis the shields, which should basically make them die from the asteroid field itself. There we go, knock out the weapons quickly, there we go. And the asteroid should kill them before I had a chance to reload. Okay, good. That could have been nasty. Asteroid fuel is something we want to avoid if at all possible. We get a fuel, two missiles, and 11 scrap out of their wreckage, and that will do nicely. Let's get ourselves charged up and out of here. I could have probably afforded to put power at the engines, but I forgot, so whatever. Let's jump on this side and see what happens over here, and then we have one more jump to the exit, and that'll basically use up this entire sector perfectly. We stumble across a forward scout of the Rebel fleet. They have missiles. Alright. They're powering up their FTL drive, and if they get away, they'll know to one of the fleet of our position. That's a problem. They have an attack drone, a missile, and a little laser. The missile's the only dangerous thing on that ship, but this is going to be a problem because we can't really easily hit most parts of that now. Halberd beam might have been a better choice here, so after we fire the Artemis, if we hit the shields, then I'll leave it as it is. If we don't, I'm switching to the Halberd beam and see if we can get that thing charged in time. I don't think it's going to happen, but we're going to try anyway. Ow, they hit us in the med bay. That's fine. We can just never repair that thing ever again. We're going to fire next shot at their helm, I think. The missiles would be nice to turn off, but we need them to not run away. So let's smack them in the helm. And we missed. Awesome. They might be able to get away before we can do anything else to them. Hopefully this missile doesn't hit anybody. Thankfully it missed. Ideal. Alright, so we're going to Artemis. Oh, come on now. Get the heavy laser ready. Alright, heavy laser in the weapons. We're going to Artemis the helm this time. Perfect. Alright, they can't run away anymore. And we took out the weapon system, so they can't hurt us. Of course, they've got their defenses back up. So what we're going to do now... Are we going to do that? No, we're not. We're going to leave the Artemis on. The Artemis help, uh, heavy laser combo will kill them. We just need to wait a little at a time, and it's... Oh, come on now. They're so fast repairs. Okay. Hit them in the shields. Heavy laser should kill them before they get a chance to do anything else as long as this hits. It does. And they're dead. Okay. A little bit hectic, but we got it. More free things! This is craziness! Their ship breaks apart, and we're relieved to know that we're still one step ahead of the fleet, getting three fuel, a missile 17 scrap, and a defense drone mark two. This is, like, literally ridiculous. Since the game has started, they've given us... We're in Sector 1 still! We're still in Sector 1! They've given us a heavy laser, a halberd beam, another halberd beam, a glaive beam, and a defense drone mark 2. That is literally madness. Oh, I don't even. Alright, well, let's grab ourselves another power bar, because that would be nice. We don't have to turn off our oxygen all the time, because having no oxygen is an easy way to take damage. And let's jump to the exit and just laugh in the face of danger here. This is crazy. We've arrived at a long-range beacon, and when the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector, and here we find that advanced rebel automated ship stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods, so of course we're going to attack the automated ship to get to the storage cache, even though it does have rockets of some kind, only has one level of shield, so it's not that scary. Let's attack them and see what happens. Now that- ooh, 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 that laser is bigger than I thought. Alright, this might be a bad choice, but we're going to do it anyway. If we take a bit of damage here, so be it. Here comes a rocket our way. Please miss. No. Ooh. Nasty hit in the helm. Thankfully, their weapons should be mostly offline now. Although, ooh. That's not good. 
Immunity is going to start suffocating very soon because of that, so we are going to need to get somebody over to fix the oxygen bay. I might actually just have to bail on the weapons bay entirely, but I'm going to send Vaccine over there to try and fix it before the oxygen drains out completely. Am I? I don't know. I don't, really don't want to have to bail on the helm. Doesn't seem like a good idea at all. Um, when it comes another missile our way, we can't dodge this one. Please don't hit anything important. Empty room. Good. Now these guys are going to be out of oxygen very shortly. They fixed the breach though, so they might be okay. We're going to heavy laser the weapons. There we go. Now they can't... Oh, we're out of oxygen. Get out of there. At least we broke the weapons first. That We've taken a lot of damage though. Vaccine and immunity are both low on health. We could kill them immediately with the Artemis missile, but I don't think that's relevant right now because we're going to get this fixed in a second. That's a problem though. We can't fix that breach now. We don't have a high enough oxygen level to actually be able to take it out properly. Heavy laser there to the helm to kill them. Perfect. That's a problem. We salvage 15 scrap from the broken ship, and when we investigate the station, we find that there was nothing there. It's been lain un has lain unused for some time. That is a problem, though, because we can't fix this now. And we have to upgrade our oxygen to be able to do that. And we could upgrade the oxygen? No, we need five more scrap. So we're probably going to have to do that later, but that's going to slow down the rate at which oxygen comes back to our other rooms as well, I believe. That's unfortunate. That's also going to mess up our pathing, because anyone who walks through there is going to immediately start suffocating. All right, immunity, back in the helm. Actually, we'll get vaccine to help you fix that, and we'll send antibody back to the engines. That hit on the helm is unfortunate. He's almost already at max level, or level one. Oh, he is, he's level one pilot already, that's awesome. You have level one piloting and evasion already, that's cool. All right, and let's send a vaccine here back down to the weapons. Perfect, okay, so. That's a problem. We're going to have to deal with that later, but for now we cannot. So let's jump on to the next sector. Actually, I'll be back in one second, and then we will jump on to the next sector. Um, yes. Yeah, i got to go for a second. So I'll be right back, and then we'll be able to continue onwards here. Be right back. Well, that took a lot longer than I expected. Anyway, let's get moving here and explore the next sector. What do we have in store for ourselves? We have a pirate-controlled sector or a civilian sector. Well, there's a ton of green things everywhere on this map, so it doesn't really matter where we go next. But I think we're going to go to the pirate-controlled sector, because why not? Why not? The only reason to go to the green is because it's got more stores, which is probably a pretty good reason, but we're not going there. This somewhat isolated region was thrown into chaos at the start of the rebellion. Even in peacetime, it was always beset by pirates, but now it houses a center of operations for countless pirate fleets. Well, hopefully they're not too aggressive. And the store is right beside us. That's perfect. Okay, let's go in there and sell some stuff. A few small ships are visible on the vid screen, and we almost activate weapons targeting. However, sensors indicate they're simply honest merchants. The pirates must be making us jumpy, and we message them asking about their wares. They're offering us a bunch of nice things, and we have a bunch of nice things to sell. Unfortunately, they don't have any really powerful weapons for us to rely on right now, uh, but let's see what we're going to get rid of. We're probably going to get rid of one of these halberd beams, but keeping two halberd beams in the late game is great. I don't know, we'll sell the defense drone for sure. Glaive beams are awesome, but I actually like halberd beams a little bit more because their lesser power requirement means you can often run more things with them and they don't take three years to charge. So we're probably going to sell the glaive beam despite how awesome it is just because it's not really a reasonable weapon to hold on to in the early game. If we can get another one later, we'll probably use it then, but I think keeping the two halberd beams is actually a better decision for us right now. So we'll sell that off. It hurts to do it. It definitely hurts to do it, but it's... It's important. It needs to be done, I think. Now, we could buy ourselves a teleporter. Actually, a drone control would probably be the best thing we could get ourselves right now. Get a way to defend against missiles. We don't have a whole lot of drone parts, but that's still probably our best option. Yeah, I think drone control is the way we have to go, because otherwise we're at a bit of a disadvantage here. Now, hopefully this gives us a defense drone. Nope, system repair drone. That's unfortunate. But that guy can go fix our broken uh, oxygen room, so that's useful too. Of course, he's also going to go fix the med bay, which is not exactly what we want. But it'll let us fix our broken oxygen, or broken floor panel there, which is good. And... I guess at this point we need to save up and get a defense drone, because the whole point of buying this was to use that. The other option was saving up for the cloaking device. But it looks like that's not a valid option yet, either. We have 37 scrap left. I'll buy a little bit of repair. Not too much, but a little bit, just to bring us above two-thirds hull. And I think we hold on to the rest of our money for later. We're probably going to need it for other things. I could buy the Ion Blast, and we could actually use that with all of our gear, so maybe I should do that. I should probably do that. Let's go back and buy that Ion Blast. An Ion Blast is a good item anyway. Where am, what am I looking at? Store. There we go. Buy the Ion Blast. Because if we swap out the hull missile for the Ion Blast... There we go. 
Now we actually have enough firepower to get through two levels of shields, and we can ion blast out Zoltan shields and things like that, which otherwise would give us a lot more trouble. We're out of money again, which isn't exactly great, but we'll have to see how it goes. Now we use him to go fix the breach in there, which is thankfully his first priority. We're going to have to wait for him to go Phoenix, Phoenix? finish the repairs on the med bay as well before he goes back to his bay, or I could just cancel him in there, but I don't think it's really worth it for us to block him. He's going to fix it, but it's not like we have to go in there, and it's not like we're going to put any power in it either, so it doesn't really hurt us any. Alright, send him back up to the med bay, perfect. And we'll turn him off once he's there. Good. We have a guy who can go to repairs now, which should help us out, because all of our crew are very slow and bad at those things. So, we have our Artemis and our Ion Blast ready to go. Now we can take out whatever we find, hopefully. Let's go exploring in a little bit. I think we're going to go over to this side of the board and just scooch over that way. That seems like it's probably the best strategy to me. Let's jump to this station first, though, and see what's hiding over here. What's this all about, then? This beacon is patrolled by an unmanned scout. A fight is unavoidable. Well, they got missiles and attack drones. Ion weapons aren't important, just that laser is the problem. We're going to ion blast the shield and see if we can take them out without even needing the Artemis. We might use it if we feel it's necessary, but honestly, I don't think it is. We might take a little bit of damage from the rocket, but otherwise we should be fine. And we missed them, unfortunately, and they didn't miss us. Ouch. Our Mantis just took 15 damage from a missile to the face, and now our shields are weakened, which is a problem. So we're going to ion blast them in the weapons again. That's the wrong place to ion blast, not that it really matters. And we got hit with another missile in the weapons, you jerks. Alright, this is not going that well. Let's try and actually hit them with one of these attacks, please. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what we do, because we would have missed them if not anyway. Thankfully, they missed us for once, so that's fine. We've taken a bunch of extra damage, though, and that's not actually a great start for us. Surprise, surprise. Let's keep those shields ionized. And this time, we're taking out the helm so they can't dodge us. And we missed them again. Fantastic. Let's take out the uh, shields again. I should probably just leave that on auto-fire, but... Whatever. Heavy laser in the helms, so they can't keep dodging us? Thank you. Alright, that's better. Now they're not going to be so incredibly accurate all the time. Let's heavy laser in the shields next, so we don't keep having the eye on it. So we don't have to keep ioning it all the time. There we go. He's going to keep knocking our shields out, which is actually pretty good training for Kriz. Kriz can get some extra skill out of that. Hit them in the engine, so they keep dodging us. That's why I haven't turned him off yet, is because he's actually giving us good opportunities to train here, though he almost did some damage to us, that might have been bad. And the heavy laser goes off and kills them off. Perfect! Down goes the auto assault ship, and there we go. One missile, drone part and 24 scrap, we took a whole bunch of damage there, which sucks, but not much we can do about that. Put power back in the shields, should have done that earlier, I suppose. Not sure why it would didn't go back in there automatically, but whatever. 29 scrap is not enough to buy anything we need, so let's keep moving and hope for the best. We're looking to replace as much of our crew as we can by just getting more crew, but we'll have to wait and see. We arrive to have a small fleet of NG ships target us with a message. Piracy results in negative societal impact. Not permitted. We assure them of our honest intentions and they allow us to pass. Well, that was convenient. Let's keep going. What do we find over here? Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Short-range scanners may discover useful materials whilst we wait for the FTL to recharge. So sure, let's do that. A pirate ship hiding behind one of the larger asteroids attacks us. Alright, they have a boarding system. This is our first attack with boarders involved. Oh boy. And they boarded us directly in the weapons, the jerks. Alright, well we're gonna have to... I can't sacrifice the weapon system. We're gonna have to deal with them somehow. It was gonna happen eventually. I'm hoping it wouldn't happen so soon, though. First thing we're gonna do is turn on the Artemis in our last slot. Actually, no, the Ion Blast is just as good right now, because it'll turn off the shields temporarily anyway. I really don't want to let them destroy the weapons, so what we're going to do is we're going to run over this way, and we're going to vent the weapons completely. There we go. Get over here. Somewhere not in the venting zone. Turn off the oxygen so it vents even faster. They're probably going to be able to destroy at least one bar of the system before we can take them out, but we'll have to wait and see. Ion Blast the shield so the asteroids start to hurt them. Not a hit, unfortunately. All right. They might be suffocated before anything bad happens. There goes our first bomb, and we actually were able to keep two bars of weapon power, so that's good. Bomb hits an empty room, which is also good. Ion Blast, please hit them this time. You missed him again, and I missed the opportunity to fire the heavy laser in there. Awesome. All right, so we're going to move you again. We're going to keep venting the rooms. Nope, not that one yet. Get through here first. Now we vent the rooms. Now we vent this room. We got hit in the shields, but that's unfortunate. How much we can do about it? We missed them again. No, we didn't. We didn't fire yet. There we go. They've left. We close all the internal doors. We turn the oxygen back on. There we go. Hopefully fix the shields. Chris is taking a lot of damage from direct attacks, which is not what we want. Please hit the weapons. There we go. Finally, we hit the shields. They don't actually have their shields up all the time. Jeez. They missed a bunch of shots, which is great. We're going to go back in here and run the weapon system so we can actually fire more often. Heavy laser next goes into the weapons. Hopefully turn off some of those lasers. The small bombs are dangerous for hitting our crew, but the lasers can actually hurt us. There we go. Now we're a little bit safer. Our shields should eventually get fixed by our Mantis crewmen. 
Although having him working the shield is probably not the best for that exact reason. But there we go. Back up to two shield bars, and we should be fine. Weapons are back on. Heavy laser them in the helm. We should kill them. Oh, the asteroid killed them for us. Perfect. Okay. Ship explodes, giving us a missile to jump part in 17 scrap. We're taking more damage. That was pretty good for dealing with the borders. It's super tempting to put people in the med bay, but that's the point of this challenge. No healing is allowed. No healing at any point. Let's go over this way and see what else happens. Alright, once we arrive, our screen lights up with warnings. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools and have tried to shut down our engines. Our crew managed to keep them barely operational and move into attack. Thankfully, their weapons can't hurt us. That's a, a very nice boon here, given that it just knocked our engine power down to one. So, I think we're just going to blast them to very slow and painful death with the Ion Blast Heavy Laser combo. It'll work eventually. One more Ion Blast here will knock their shields down and we can knock them out completely. And hit him in the helm so we can't miss anymore. There we go. Ion Blast, auto fire in the shields. We're doing auto fire on a single weapon by holding control down, of course. There we go. Let's heavy laser them in the oxygen next, just to be mean. I could knock out their weapons, but they can't actually hurt us with them, so there's no real need to. Plus, it gives us more chance to evade things and train up our crew. And heavy laser in the engines. There we go. And next heavy laser shot will guarantee kill them, because they can't dodge anymore. So, heavy laser to the helm. Goodbye, energy bomber. Bonk, there it goes. Okay, with the pirate ship destroyed, our engines come back online, we get three fuel and ten scrap from the debris. Alright, not bad. Now with that, we're probably going to buy ourselves some more engine power. That's probably our most important thing right now. Getting ourselves a defense drone is important, powering up our weapons so we can do more damage more quickly is important, but for right now, I think the most important thing is either doors or engines. And we're actually going to go for doors right now. Crazy as it sounds, having level 3 doors is going to make a big difference with borders in the future, I think. So we're going to grab those right now. Let's keep going, though. we got to deal with what we can deal with. All right. Upon completing our jump, we receive a message from a nearby ship saying, Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Um, no thank you. They say we'll regret the decision, but I'm not convinced we will. They have a single laser which can't get through our shields, a beam which can't get through our shields, and a bomb of an unknown type. Depending on what that is, that could be bad, but for now, we're going to count on it not being bad. We're going to ion blast them in the shields at the earliest opportunity and heavy laser their weapons, so hopefully they can't hit us with anything. I believe that'll knock the bomb out first. Yes, it did. Fantastic. They can't hurt us. This is exactly what we were hoping for. This kind of lovely disable. Alright, heavy laser. We're going to make sure we knock out their helms. They can't dodge us. They're going to get the weapons oh, back on soon, so we're going to have to use the next heavy laser shot to knock out the weapons again to make sure they don't get the bomb back online, we have no idea what that thing is. There we go. Bomb back offline, and it's got a breach in it now, which is extra nice. Let's heavy laser the helm to hopefully avoid any future misses. Knock that thing offline. And we missed again. Well, this is why I'm trying to bomb it so it doesn't hit us. <laughs> Alright, let's heavy laser the weapons and see if we can hit that one. Apparently their weapon room is not as good at dodging as the rest of their ship evidently is. Let's heavy laser the helm again and see if we can actually hit it this time. Oh, fired that at the wrong timing. No, just the right timing. Perfect. Just barely got through there before the shields came back on, so that's very nice. Let it actually block the shields this time, hit them in the weapons, make sure they can't use the bombs, and they're dead. Goodbye, Federation Bomber. No damage taken. Perfect. Ship explodes, giving us a fuel drone part and 17 scrap. Hull damage isn't as important as crew damage, though. Crew damage is permanent. Hull damage can be repaired. Chris, you're down to only 70 health. Jeez. Well, let's keep going here. I wonder if I can even make that jump. I'm kind of counting on being able to do that. Well, let's see. Let's jump over here, then we'll jump into the nebula and deal with whatever's inside. And it's a sun. That's exceptionally bad news. We arrived to find ourselves extremely close to a star. We received a message from a pirate ship saying they're glad we arrived. Their ship was damaged and they were getting desperate. And, of course, they bored us. Oh, good. At least they're all in the weapons room. Get out of there. Pronto. Before they fire at you. Perfect. All right. Now it's time to vent the room. We can afford to vent it because there's nobody else in there right now. Even if they destroy our weapon system, that's fine. The priority is getting out of here alive and venting out the people who are destroying our weapons. The problem is, since we're in a... Uh, are you going to our med bay? No. Uh, since we're in a sun, if we stay around here too long to fix the weapons, we're going to take a ton of damage. So we're going to hopefully suffocate them before they break through the doors. There's three of them trying to get in medbay, though, so that might not work out so well. There's a distress beacon over there we can jump to, which might be our best choice, honestly, instead of going through the nebula. Because if there's an enemy in here, we might be in serious trouble. We're going to wait and see, though, until the first solar flare warning happens. And then we'll bail. 
It's waiting a long time though, we got pretty lucky there. And they're in the med bay now, so we're probably gonna destroy that, which is fine, because having that thing damaged doesn't make any difference to us. There's a solar flare warning. We're gonna get out of here. I guess we're gonna jump into the nebula and see what happens. If there's an enemy, we made the wrong choice. If there's not, we're lucky. A heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before we have time to make contact, they fade away into the nebula. If we try and follow them, we'll probably have to do a fight, but I guess we're gonna try it anyway. Here we go. Yep, here we go. While searching fruitlessly through the nebula, we stumble across the rebel ship from which the Federation loyalists were likely hiding. We prepare for a fight. Thankfully, though, all they've really got is drones, so that's not that bad. And we're gonna open this and make sure the boarders who are attacking our medbay all die. I think they've actually been vented, yeah. They've gone off to attack our drone control. We lose a drone part, but they're still gonna all die, so that's fine. And I think they're all dead. Close the doors. Turn the oxygen back on. They can just barely hurt us. So what we're going to do is, thankfully that was pretty lucky, we're going to switch to the Artemis for now while we wait to fix our other weapons. I can't see how their air is doing in there, so I can't just rush in blindly. We're going to open all the internal doors, which should fix the oxygen situation, so I can run him in there now. There we go. Here come some more lasers. Artemis is not yet ready to fire. Please miss me. Uh-oh. Okay. Empty room damage. That's fine. Artemis, you're going to fire at their weapon system. We need that thing offline so they can't actually deal damage. That drone by himself is harmless. There we go. Weapon system is temporarily destroyed. Perfect. Close all internal doors. Now, we're going to send Antibody over to go help fix the weapons. No, we're not. We want that evasion chance up. And he repairs at a perfectly fine speed, even if it's not the fastest ever. There we go. So, weapons are back online soon. We're going to switch on the heavy laser next, because the next Artemis is going into their shields. Artemis the shields. Go. We have plenty of missiles to burn on this kind of thing, so I'm not concerned about this at all. Heavy laser Laser is about to good to go. We're going to switch off the Artemis, turn on the Ion Blast. Heavy Laser is going to knock out their weapons again to make sure they can't fire on us with that thing. Heavy Laser, go! Perfect. Weapons are offline perfectly. Ion Blast the shields to make sure they can never repair them. Next Heavy Laser shot is going into the Helm to make sure they can't run away if they decide they want to. There we go. They also can't dodge us anymore, so the next Heavy Laser will kill them if we fire it anywhere nearby them. Heavy laser go! Alright, there goes their engines, they are destroyed, perfect. So, ship explodes, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 25 scrap. People's health is getting low! We want to try and find some replacement crew soon, and if we don't start finding them, we're going to be in trouble. Not having a teleporter definitely makes it harder to get replacement crew, though. We might want to get one of those at the earliest opportunity. That was something else I was considering back at the previous store, but for some silly reason, decided against it. Alright, let's jump over this way, and we'll probably come up the side here. I do want to go to this just beacon, though, so I guess we'll go into the nebula instead. We might have to lose a jump or two in the sector, but we'll see. We have plenty of fuel. And, it's hard to see why, but this beacon is apparently a tourist destination. One of the ships at the small station here is offering a deal of four fuel for three missiles. Well, we don't need the missiles that badly anymore, and fuel is always good, so we'll take some. Distress beacon it is! What's over here now? Greetings. It's so good to see you. We've been out of fuel and floating here for weeks. We were terrified a space pirate or one of those damn rebels would find us first. Can you spare some fuel? Of course we can. Have two fuel. We give them two fuel and they say, Thank you. Here, have this extra scrap as payment. Twenty-eight scrap is a very nice reward for two fuel. Especially since it costs us like six to get the fuel in the first place, so that's awesome. Now with that money... We're probably going to want to power up the engines. I really want to boost our weapons, though, so we can start using the halberd beam if we want. But we're going to boost the engines up to at least level 5, because that's a good level to have your engines at. That 45% evasion with two maximized crew is very nice. Now, the problem with having high skill crew is that they're probably going to start dying at some point, and we're going to need replacements for them who are not so skilled. But we'll take what we can get for now. Let's jump onwards. Having that Ion Blast helps scale up our weapons guy extra fast, too, which is great. Oh, wow, more free things. A small NG research vessel is trying to fend off a Mantis ship. We move in to engage, but after a quick scan of our ship, the Mantis ship retreats. The NG offer us a drone schematic as thanks for our timely arrival, giving us 12 scrap and a defense drone mark two. Very nice. We're probably not going to use that thing ever, but it's nice to have it. All right, so let's jump to the exit. We can probably get one more jump and then one jump back before we get overrun. Maybe not, though. We'll see. What's over here? We arrive at a long-range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. We detect an automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost here, so let's intervene to defend. And the automated ship moves in to engage us. They have a weapons... Oh, they have a bunch of weapons. Okay, in that case, we're going to turn off the oxygen temporarily to turn on the Artemis, because I think we're going to need some extra firepower here. We'll see, though. We'll see what they manage to actually do to us. With, with the dual laser, ion blast, and the drone, they could really hurt us here if we don't hit them quick. So, knock out their weapons right now. There we go. Ion is online, which isn't great, but we're going to fire another missile at their weapons to hopefully turn that thing off too. 
No, we missed. That's unfortunate. All right. Thankfully, they're still disabled. Heavy laser the weapons. All right. It's breached. We are safe now. They can never hurt us again. Excellent. I can turn the Artemis off, put power back in the oxygen so we don't wind up suffocating. Hit them in the engine so they can't keep dodging us. There we go. Because like I said, with two shields, this guy basically can't hurt us. But with the arsenal they were carrying before, they could do some serious damage. There we go. Knock out the engines as well. And one more shot will kill them. And heavy laser go. Perfect. The auto assault ship goes down. And we get a missile, a drone part, and 12 scrap. Very nice. The outpost hails us after the scout was destroyed, saying, Thanks for the help. We've been harassed non-stop by those scouts. Take this on the house. Giving us a missile, a drone part, and 16 scrap. Perfect. All right. Well, we have a hull missile in storage. We got a halberd beam in storage. If we want to, use, if we ever want to use those again, I probably should have sold the hull missile when I bought the ion blast. I'm not sure why I didn't. Whatever. We have a couple things worth selling, so we can get rid of those later. Hopefully, get a teleporter to get ourselves more crew. For now, I'm going to hold on to some money. I'd like to buy myself the weapon control, but we need 60 scrap to be able to upgrade that and power it anyway. And we don't even have enough power for the one we've got, so. No point in rushing that, although I think we will go back here and then jump back to the exit. It'll burn a bit of extra fuel, but it'll get us at least one more jump in the sector, and we should have plenty of time to get there before we run out of space, so... Let's jump to this unvisited beacon, then jump back to the exit. What's here? We discover one of the Rebels' autonomous scouts. The ship's AI wastes no time in engaging us. They've got no shields, though, so this is a perfect chance to use our halberd beam. These guys can hurt us if they hit all their shots, though. So let's depower some things, turn on the halberd beam, and hope for the best. This thing should one-shot this guy, although he might have enough time to use the cloak twice before we can kill him, and he might have the chance to do some damage if he gets lucky with his uh, dual laser shots. He did get lucky. Ow! Thankfully, that doesn't do any crew damage, I don't think, so we're fine. We're gonna go send antibody to go put out that fire. Actually, I don't even think we need to. Our oxygen's off, it should put itself out. Halberd beam, get yourself ready to fire, although our shields are broken. That's a big problem. Get in there and fix the shields, otherwise we're gonna take more damage, and this is gonna be real damage this time. Thankfully, one of the shots missed, so we might just take some beam damage. Nope, no beam damage either. Okay, we're good. Halberd beam, you're gonna kill them for us. We wanna make sure we do enough damage, but we will as long as we hit three rooms, because this does... No, no, two damage per room, okay. If we want to kill them, we have to make sure we hit four rooms, so this should do it. There we go, goodbye. Fix the shields. That could have been much worse. Ship explodes, giving us three fuel drone part and 24 scrap. Excellent, we could have potentially gotten better stuff out of that if we were luckier. Not taking any hull damage. But I will take what we got. And we're going to have to turn the oxygen back on soon to make sure nobody suffocates. But that's not too bad either. We just want to make sure the fires go out. Now that the fire, now that the oxygen is drained from the room on fire, we don't have to worry about keeping the oxygen off. We're just trying to make that no oxygen state happen faster. There we go. Perfect. Our crew health is a little bit low though. 124 health on immunity. 102 on vaccine, 142. These guys are fine, but Kriz is down to only 70, which is not great for somebody we planned on using to do melee damage. But you know what? Even that was evidently a wrong decision because we're just going to be using ventilation in our level 3 doors, so he's just another crew member right now, which is fine, but still. Alright, let's get back to the exit and get out of here. We don't want to hang around any more than we have to here. Alright, what's our option now? Next sector. We have Zoltan Homeworlds or Engie Homeworlds. Well, I think Zoltan homeworlds are marginally better for us because not only do we have an ion weapon, we have no NG, so we can't do the NG homeworlds quest anyway. And the Zoltan homeworlds quest is really easy to do. It doesn't involve fighting, you can do it with any classes. So I think the Zoltan homeworlds is actually a more beneficial place for us. NG homeworlds isn't bad, because I mean, it'll mean more people with drones, but that's still not that bad for us. Whereas Zoltan homeworlds are, are basically only beneficial. So let's go to the Zoltan Homeworlds, and we're going to have to end this episode here for now. You've entered Zoltan territory. This species is not renowned for giving anything for nothing, but we can always be assured of fair hearing. Well, thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing some FTL again after quite some time here on board the VSS Panacea, and uh, this is, of course, the challenge run for having no healing of any kind. Oh boy. Well, look forward to see you again next time, and we'll see if we can get any further in this horrible mess. <laughs> Until then, bye bye